What? It's time to go. The grandparents tea at Lucy's school. It's time. Dad. They're coming to the exciting part. We have to go now. Oh, and miss my episode. Are you insane? Yes. Now, I've got to find out if Ralph is Maud's lover or her twin brother in disguise. I can't believe you watch this stuff. Why not? Because it's stupid. It's trash. I'll watch it. It's brilliant. It's pure theater. But it's not real. It isn't life. Well, you think life isn't theater? Of course not. Well, then you're wrong. Now, there are times when life is just like theater. You know where I learned that? In Ireland. Oh, Dad, we've got to go. No, 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 wait. I'm just getting started. Now, I was on my way to London with my friend Remy. Uh -huh. We were going to join the Belgian army, you see. Now, our boat took us to Queenstown, and we landed there. It was April, just a little before Easter, 1916. Here we are. Now what? Now we get ourselves a ride to Dublin. Come on. This is certainly more colorful than Mexico. That's for sure. Well, we made it. Welcome to Great Britain, Indiana. <laughs> I thought this was Ireland. It is. An ancient part of the United Kingdom. Rule Britannia. Do we enlist here? No, yeah, for that we go to London with the ferry. It's only a few hours. Look, Rumi, I don't mean to be a sourpuss, but we've got no money for the tickets. Money? Pooh, we'll get the job. And in one or two weeks at the most, we'll be in England. You'll see. Kind of a job. What does it matter? <laughs> we are in Dublin's first city where the girls are so pretty. Well, maybe a few days here won't be so bad. <laughs> Bring back the answers. Quick now. You'll fight for Catholic Belgium, all right. But you won't fight for Catholic Ireland. You bloody fiend, you bastard. Ah! Delaney. What? Oh, no. Excellent performance. What's a Fenian? A Fenian is an Irish Republican. Jones. Careful. Mind you don't spill any. You'll end up like the last barman here. The last barman? Join the army. Or you get blown to smithereens. Jones. loaf of bread you can find. Butter, meat. I must have some meat. What kind? Any kind, I don't care. Ham would be nice. Two shillings, that's not enough. That's all we can afford. Gotta take it easy, we'll never get out of here. See you later. And eggs, bring back some eggs.
taken? There. Didn't I say you had to be an American? How did you know? Why, from your beautiful hat. Do you mind if I join you? Suppose we do. Sean, don't be such a grouch. You're more than welcome. Thank you. I'm Indiana Jones. I'm Maggie Lemass. Hello, Maggie. And this is my friend, Nuala. Hello. And this is my brother, Sean. Hi. Don't pay him any mind, Mr. Indiana. Indy. He's in an awful black mood today. Maggie, shut it. I will not. How long have you been in Ireland, Mr. Indy? It's Indy, just, just Indy. How long have you been in Ireland, Indy? <laughs> not long. He's uh, kind of on a world tour. A world tour? Yeah. Sure he's one of them American millionaires. Well, in the seat back. Yes, sir. Um, a pot of tea, please. Tea for one, is it? We've just finished ours. But we wouldn't say no to another cup. Um, make that tea for four, please. And some cake, sir? The cream cakes here are just grand. And some cakes, please. Yes, sir. Thank you. How many countries have you visited? Well, most of Europe, then Africa, India, China. Isn't that where all the little boys wear pigtails? Well, not just the boys, the men, too. <laughs> Holy Mary! And then just before coming here, I was in Mexico. Mexico? Yeah. I thought there was a revolution going on there. Well, there is. I took part in it. Rode with Pancho Villa. Pancho Villa? Really? Really, yeah. He's a great guy. We were buddies. What's their program? Program? The revolutionary aims. Well, it's kind of complicated, mostly to do with land. And their freedom. Well, obviously, but the thing is... Now, tea for four. That's fine, thank you. And some cakes? Oh, we couldn't. Haven't we had more than enough already? Yeah, no, then we... Well, perhaps just one of the little creamy ones. And a chocolate eclair, if you're twisting the arm. And a couple of the little custardy ones with the twiddles on top. And the yellow one with the slices of mixed fruit inside. So, eat up. Thanks for the wonderful tea. You're welcome. It's grand. That's a funny looking army. They don't even have guns. Oh, well, they're just the Irish volunteers. Or else the citizen army. What, some kind of national guard? No, they're Fenians. They tried to overthrow the British rule. Really? Sure, nobody takes any notice. They're silly fellas. A joke. But don't tell Sean I said so. Maggie! Just a minute. Will I see you again? Yeah, yeah. I, I hope so. There's a matinee at the Tivoli Theatre tomorrow. I'll be there. Grand. Maggie! Come on. I'll see you tomorrow, Indy. Okay. Bye. All of it? The two whole shillings? I couldn't help it. There was this girl. She was so pretty. But I'm starving. I did save you this. I need some real food. I know. I have to get some more money. Come on. Get dressed. Let's go to work. Girls.
together now. When Irish eyes are smiling, sure it's like a morning spring. In the lilt of Irish laughter, you can hear the angels sing. When Irish hearts are happy, <laughs> we do now? There's a dear little tea shop around the corner. Oh, I'm sorry, but I really have to go. Really? Yeah, I've got an appointment business. It's, it's real important. <sighs> what a shame. Yeah, yeah, well, that's business, I guess. But I'll see you again. Promise? Promise. Bye. Such a good-looking fella. And so free with his money. Who wouldn't you be if you're an American millionaire? Ginger beer and point of shandy in a couple of minutes. Irish hearts are happy. Where'd you hear that? At the theater? Don't you mean the music hall? I guess. It sure wasn't it. Sung by a brat of a boy with a bunch of shamrock in his coat and a shillelagh in his hand. And didn't he wish he had top of the morning, a top of the morning? What's wrong with that? Everything. Why? Because it's a phony and a lie. It's the kind of thing that makes us a laughing stock. Look at the Irish. Aren't they a scream? Well, gee, I just... I... Makes my blood boil. Why, because you're a writer? Because I'm an Irishman. Yeah. Maybe a writer, too. Oh, you like the theater? Well, yeah. Do you go much? Well, not as much as I'd like to. Meet me outside. Tomorrow at 3 o'clock, I'll take you to the Abbey. The Abbey? Is that, is that some kind of a church? No. <laughs> some might think so, but no, it's a theatre. Our theatre. Thanks, I'd like that. <laughs> Get along. And don't forget those drinks. Oh, thanks. God save all here. God save you kindly. You have good shelter here. She, the Irish woman, Kathleen Nahulahan. In other words, Ireland. Symbolic, you see. Yes, prompt. Sit down. Sit down by the fire there and welcome. There's a hard wind outside. Have you traveled far today? I have traveled far, very far. There are few who have traveled as far as myself. Was it much land they took from you? My four beautiful green fields. Four provinces of Ireland taken by the English. Tell me something I can do for you. Tell me something I can do for you. You're not making sense. Speak clearly and with imagination. <laughs> no unnecessary move. Who's that? It's Nibs. The man himself. Director of the Abbey. Poet and playwright, Mr. William Butler Yeats. 
Is that Sean O'Casey? It is, sir. I shall be pleased to see you, Mr. O'Casey, after I've spoken with the actors. Thank you, sir. What does he want to talk to you about? Um, my play. <clears throat> Your play is challenging, Mr. O'Casey. You have a gift for characterization. I do not think, however, it is suitable for the stage of our national theater. You don't? It's too prolix, too discursive, and to my mind, too realistic. Too realistic? Well, your hero, Jack, he is a socialist, is he not? Political ideas are seldom dramatic, even from the brilliant pen of Mr. George Bernard Shaw. So my play is a failure, then? Yes, but an honorable one. Pray do not lose heart, Mr. Casey. I shall be pleased to see more of your work. Indeed, I look forward to it. Yes, a definite gift for characterization. Thank you for allowing me to see it. Thank you for reading it, sir. And how did you find rehearsals? The play is fine. Mr. Jones? I agree with Sean. I like it. It came to me in a dream, you know. Really? A dream almost as distinct as a vision, as if from an invisible world. I believe poetical drama has no need of realistic setting, but only that which is legendary. You mean symbolic? Exactly so. Poetical, legendary, airy, fairy, owl, Bollocks! He said he liked your play. He did not. He said it was challenging. Challenging! That's only one step up from interesting. The last bloody thing any writer wants to hear. We said the characters were great. Well, what would he know about us? With his bloody Celtic Thorns and his Brian Baroos and his bloody Kathleen Nahulads. And when did Yates ever look at, at, at a real person, let alone try and understand one? It came to me in a dream. Did you really hate his play? Ah, his play's all right. But it has nothing to do with Ireland now. It's a piece of ancient history. I want to write plays that stink of life. Real life. I want to rub people's noses in it so maybe they'll get up and do something about it. You know, I want to... To hell with it! And to hell with William Butler Bloody Yates! No, no, not really. Hello, Nula. Where are we going? Anywhere, I... Well, let's not waste a single minute. What is she doing here? Me? Sure, isn't she my very best friend? Well, yeah, yeah, And isn't I... she just dying to hear all about your fine adventures? Well, sure, but I just thought that for once... Nula, hurry up. You want to hear all about it, Indy. Right from the very beginning, you're not leaving out a single thing. Not all the places you've ever been to. The cowboys in America, the Indians in India, the pygmies in Africa. What about the men with the pigtails? Oh, yeah, but tell me what Breed laughing says. Breed laughing? Do you know what she said to me? She came up to me straight after school. <laughs> <laughs> Indy, come on into the water, it's gorgeous. Indy, come on into the water now. Come on in. <laughs> <laughs>
Jones, let's be having you. Any sign of those drinks? Mmm. Come in. <laughs> well, if it isn't himself. Do you know him? Doesn't everyone? It's Indiana Jones, the American millionaire. <laughs> Ginger beer and shit. So, what do you say? Are you with us? I say you're Egypt. Do you not want Ireland to be free? I want a socialist Ireland. Not an Ireland that'll be taken over by Catholic priests. Maggie! Maggie, I'd like you to meet my friend Remy. Hello. Remy, this is Maggie. Hello. Nice to meet you. And this is New. Enchanté. I'm happy to meet you, Nula. Indy has told me so many delightful things about you. Let's go and find some way of. Why'd you bring him? I don't know. I thought they might like each other. Where are they going? I don't care. As long as they leave us alone. What for? Play is good, it changes you. Changes the way you look at things. Changes the way you think. I thought it was supposed to entertain. It does, but not in a stupid, mindless way. Tom Mixer or Charlie Chaplin will do that for you, and a damn sight better. Charlie Chaplin is great. He is a veritable genius in cinema, but theater, Indy, theater's live, which makes it dangerous. Dangerous? Not because the scenery will fall down, but because it's actually happening right here and now in front of you. But the actors strip themselves naked, and that takes guts. The audience are part of it. They share. It, it, it's a ritual that's very old and very mysterious and goes right down deep into the roots of our experience. It, it has to do with magic. But when it succeeds, the thing happens, which makes it dangerous. Do you see? I never thought of it like that. I do so now, because at its greatest, greatest moment, theater becomes life, and life becomes theater. The cinematograph will never do that for you. Will I join you? Suit yourself. I've got a message for you. Have you now? Now, here we are, prattling on about theatre and how it can inform your life. Sean, it's important. If it's about the Citizen Army, you can tell the boys down at Liberty Hall. I've resigned. Can we get some work done around here? Oh, I've got a message for you, too. Maggie says, would you like to come swimming tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, I'd like that. Did you tell her? About you working here? Nah. I wouldn't like to dispel her fine illusions. I'm leaving that to you. It's London next year after. Yeah, as soon as I could buy a ticket for the ferry, I'm going to join the Belgian army. And why would you want to be doing a foolish thing like that? Because this war has to be fought. Above all, it has to be won. The alternative is unthinkable. You're mad. <laughs> and why am I mad? Don't you realize that it's the wrong war? Oh, that's right. Maggie said you're a Fenian. What's so funny about that? Well, Ireland's already got home rule. British Parliament passed it. As soon as the war's over, you'll be free to govern yourselves. Govern ourselves? When we'd still have to swear allegiance to the English king and everything that means. And that's so bad? You're an American, and you can ask me that? Well, what about the Protestant loyalists in the North? Protestant, Catholic, North, South, it doesn't matter. We're all Irishmen. That's what counts. Well, suppose they don't agree. Suppose they want to stay with England. Well, then by God, we'll fight them too. <sighs> Ireland must be free, and the only way is the Republic. That's what I'm willing to fight for and die for if I must. Yeah, now you're the one who's mad. Yeah? Yeah. Says who? 
Says me. Ah, uh, no, Sean's up again. Listen, you're just a school kid. Yeah? Yeah. Well, it's better than being a bird brain. Yeah, who's a bird brain? You are. Yeah? Yeah. Well, for one thing, it's... Come on in and get yourselves wet. We're leaving. But, Sean, I'm I doing said we're leaving. Yet. Come on. Now will you go away and give my head peace? But I say we need you. And I say you're mad, all of you. Look, you can't just desert us like that. Whatever you idiots are up to, I don't want to know about it! Sean! Sean! You're not gonna stop me from seeing her. Try it. Just so you know. Stay away from my sister! Or you get a puck in the eye! But the nuns are so terribly strict. They say powder and rouge are sinful. But I don't agree. Sure, it was only for a school play anyway. I, mean, I went up to Biddy after school. It was the, it was the Monday, it wasn't. No, that's right, it was the Tuesday because Biddy was actually telling me after what the nuns so. said. Nula, would you ever wipe your Do you remember that squinty eyed boy? Michael Fogarty. I do you what about sir? Well, he went to America and he didn't get rich. Oh, His man told my man he is working every day the God sent. Thank you. Ah, oh, the Fogarty's are all gone. We had Nell Murphy by the scruff of her neck, screaming to the fullness of her lung capacity. Oh, look! Oh, would you look at the colour of it? It's totally gorgeous, Nula. What do you think? Indy, gorgeous. Indy, would you look at this little cat, isn't it? Darling, can't you just see me in it? Look at the teeth. Be the very latest thing. Oh. Wasn't the hat just grand? Mm. And there's so many people. Sure, there are many ladies. And the ladies are just so fine with the big houses and the servants and riding around in the shiny new motor cars. And there are places where they sell nothing but ice cream. Ice cream parlors. Mm. Any flavor you like, chocolate. Chocolate and strawberry, both at the same mm. time. Sure, it'd be enough reason to come with the What do you fancy, Newell? What do you fancy, cup of tea? Well, good night, ladies. Don't say you're going. I have to work. Another important business meeting. Well, no, actually, it's... I... Ah, but it'll be something exciting. Well, it's more like I have... I know. A surprise. Listen, Maggie, there's something you need to know. I'm not a millionaire. I'm a waiter at Rooney's Pub. You're what? I'm a waiter at Rooney's Pub. I serve drinks, and then I collect empty glasses, and then I wash them. And when I've saved up for the ferry, I'm on my way. Good night, ladies. Andy! I am never, ever gonna see you again. Guess not. Well! Giving himself airs, and all along he wasn't nothing but a chance, sir. Such a lovely looking fella. <clears throat> I warned you, didn't I? So? Come on. They're going to fight! Close the doors.
are we doing this? <laughs> Forget. <laughs> Here's to the unpredictability of life. Sean, Sean, what I said about Maggie, I... Not at all. I've had to listen to her chatter all my life. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Indy! I wish you those trees. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've got the ferry tickets. So, you're off to London then? Yeah, first thing in the morning. And we have two shillings left over. London, here we come. Well, I wish you the best of luck. Thanks. You take care. Yeah. What time does the boat leave? First thing in the morning. We're pleased to be going. Aren't you? Yeah, but... Hey, what's that? Come on. Come on! Something's going on at the post office! Irish men and Irish women! In the name of God and of the dead generations from which she receives her old tradition of nationhood, summons her children to her flag and strikes for freedom! Oh, no. How should I know? Some kind of foolishness? They'll not be wanting postage stamps, that's for sure. You ask me, something's up. On an Easter Monday! <laughs> Don't be joking. We hereby proclaim the Irish Republic as a sovereign, independent state. In this supreme hour, the Irish nation must, by its valor and discipline, prove itself worthy of the august destiny to which it is called. God save! Let's move along. Come on. 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 I wish to God it was. But that's crazy. How can they hope to win? They're not looking to win. What they're looking for is a glorious defeat. Then they are insane. Are they? Ireland's always needed her martyrs. A blood sacrifice, that's what they're offering. Where life for one moment becomes theatre. He understands. <laughs> Big moment. I must be a part of it. <laughs> trenches up Stevens Green. Be God, they'll be fighting any minute. If it's fighting they're after, why don't they go to France? Listen, it started. I'm off. Take cover!
got to get to the GPO. Are you out of your mind? We've got to. Sean's there. Quickly, all of you, open the roof. Take those fire bombs with you. It stopped. The rebels have given up. They're surrendering. Sean! 
Executed. It's hard to tell. They're just rumors. Pierce, Clark, McDonough. Who else? Who else? McBride, Plunkett. Fourteen, I think. A lot of civilians and soldiers were killed in fighting. In, in the streets. Do the people still hate us? No. They say you're brave fellas, patriots. Is that true? Since the surrender, everything's changed. The British have botched it. You're heroes now. <sighs> ah, it was worth it then. After all. Well, you'll be leaving then. Join the British Army. Belgian Army. Well, I fought my war anyway. God bless Andy. God bless you, Sean. Try not to. Ah, the hell with you. Good luck. Will you be coming back? I hope so. Better take a good look then, because you'll never recognize her. Old Ireland's changed. Changed, changed utterly. A terrible beauty is born. Yeats wrote that about the Easter Rebellion. He was right. Poor Ireland was never the same again. But Sean Lamass was not shot, no sir. He survived and went on to become Prime Minister of Ireland. O'Casey well, didn't stay. But he wrote some great plays. <laughs> oh, my goodness, we're late. If we don't leave right now, we're going to miss the tea and cookie presentation. 
Well, what about my show? It finished ages ago. Finished? Oh, damnation. Why didn't you stop me? No one's ever been able to do that, Dad. Well, darn and double darn. Now I'll never know if young Jeffrey was 